What we're going to talk about today, and if you notice right off the bat, my typical video uh, quality is probably not normally what you're used to seeing. And that's because today we are shooting everything raw. So everything that goes into the camera and comes out is the way that you guys are going to be seeing it on YouTube. Okay. So first of all, <clears throat> what I'm going to talk about is, like I said, I was waiting on a tool for OBS. And what I wanted to do is originally shoot OBS, have me in the corner talking, but I found out with the capture software I have, I couldn't do things like show you guys how I set up like the camera, for instance, because I only have one C920 and that's what we're shooting off of right now. And if that's being occupied by the one program shooting me, then I can't show you guys on OBS how to use OBS. So I thought maybe if I just get a camera and kind of vlog style this whole thing and point it at the screen and show you guys everything that I'm doing in real time, that would be the best thing. And I tried that, but all the screens came out pretty bad on the current cameras I have. So uh, recently, uh, the family's been looking at new phones because the phones have been getting old. So this is my uh, old phone and current phone until yesterday. This is the Sony Xperia, I think just Xperia Z, first Xperia Z actually. So this is the one they showed at CES like in 2013 that was being dunked in water. So it is a waterproof phone. And it's actually one of the things I tested out as soon as I got it. The other thing I liked about it was the camera. It had a 12 megapixel camera for a 2013 and it shot both photos and video in high dynamic range. Now it's not like the high dynamic range displays we're talking about. It's just a high exposure and low exposure image that it takes for every frame and then compares the two to get the best exposure. Sometimes it works pretty well and sometimes things come off a little bit orange or uh, yellow sometimes. So it's, but it is a neat tool to have. So I've been using this to shoot things like events and whatnot, but it's getting a little long in the tooth. It's only a quad core processor on this thing. And I think it's only 1.5 gigahertz quad core, uh, two gigs of Ram. And so it's getting slow and the video quality is not really matching up. And I told you guys a little while back, I think that I was going to start shooting stuff in 720 because all the cameras I have are 1080. And a lot of times I can't get 1080 to look crisp, but if I scale it down to 720, it looks, they look pretty much the same. Like if you hit 720, 1080, they look identical almost. And that comes down to bit rate. Like right now the C920 is doing 1080 and that's what you guys are seeing raw, but it's doing 1080 at 17 megs a second. So if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, get off the 4K option, put in 1080 for the thing and you'll see the difference between the two. But, um, We'd been looking at phones. I'd been suggesting the uh, OnePlus 3T because it was about $430, and for what you're getting for, it was a better phone. Uh, the other one we were looking at was this guy, the Samsung uh, Galaxy S7. Now, this was going for $720 um, originally, or like $650 if you bought it straight up, but $720 off contract. So I think the S8 is coming out soon, and so we ended up picking these up for about 360 bucks off the plan. So this one has a decent enough camera. It is also, once again, a 12 megapixel camera, so no upgrade there. But the CMOS sensor is slightly bigger than this camera. And you guys, if you were to look at the back, you could actually see like the aperture, the hole, the aperture is slightly bigger on this. So to deal with this is, is one of the improvements for it is the uh, sensor on the inside. The actual pixels or photo cells are slightly bigger than that. So should, they should be better at capturing low light. However, I've heard from a friend that the low light is still not great on that. And that's what we'll check out. So what we're going to do is we're going to boot this guy up and we're going to check out the internal camera quality and the external camera quality. I'm going to talk about it. Uh, we're going to shoot in HDR. And also, you guys are going to hear the difference in like the microphones and stuff too, because right now I'm recording this in the C920 with this uh, monoprice mic. So uh, let's go ahead and see what the difference here is. Okay, so what you guys are looking at right now is the internal camera on the Xperia Z. And I've never really liked uh, recording with this thing. It's kind of a, it does a weird resolution. Um, it's like 1820 by 10 something, 1024 or something like that. It's just slightly lower than 1080. It doesn't do a very good job. 
I've still got the same light pointed at me and everything and it the image comes off dark and noisy for no good reason like this camera does not look very good as far as like the uh, noise to um, brightness contrast or anything like that very good compared to like it looks fine outdoors I guess and if it's you're just doing like uh, Google Hangouts or something I guess it's still serviceable but it, to me it was never a really good camera Okay, so what you're looking at is the other side. This is what I used to shoot videos before. And the viewing angle is actually, well, it's okay, I guess. And now you can hear I had an alert go off. I'm sorry if you guys heard the vibration. As you guys can tell, the audio quality seems to only go to a left channel for some reason. Um, and the audio is not that tight or good on this phone. So what I would do is if I was shooting something with this, uh, I would either, if I really had to use the audio uh, when I went to post, I would make sure I re redid it so it would come out both channels evenly. The uh, other thing I would do a lot of times is I would record this microphone down here if I had it, this USB mono price mic, and then mix it together with the footage. But a lot of times what I use this camera for is in a pinch, like if something happened or something I needed to pull this camera out and do uh, a shot like on a computer at PDX LAN or something like that. It did a pretty okay job with um, HDR video. However, for the most part, as time went on and I got slightly better equipment, I kind of moved further and further away from this. This little JVC camera from the same year this phone came out actually does a better job without HDR than this phone does a lot of times. So I kind of got less dependent on it, but this thing, as far as like picture quality goes, this 12 megapixel camera and it still has HDR for that actually shoots really really well the only downside that is is the maximum resolution at which it would shoot was actually far less than this even though they're both 12 megapixel sensors which I always thought was a bit weird okay so here we have the uh, Samsung S and I keep forgetting the cameras down there so this is shooting in QHD, so 2560 by 1440. I hope it's coming off a little sharper. It looks like I'm a little bit off angle. The uh, viewing angle is actually quite a bit wider. So if I need to do shots like Casey Neistat or something, be like, hey, check this picture out right here, you know, um, I can do something like that. But um, so it's a good camera for that. And I still, still think it comes off sharp enough. However, um, this for like uh, vlogging and stuff will probably still not be the main camera. However, it is serviceable for instances like this. So it's actually a lot, lot better. You can see the noise is not bad. And actually compared to the C920's like uh, light pickup, this camera tends to do um, pretty much on par with the C920, which I'm happy with. That's good. It means if I throw a lot of light at it, I can. And hopefully I'm not cusping the microphone pickup. But I thought when I tested it the other day, the, the microphone sounded pretty good. So we'll see here when I actually throw it in the post. Okay, and so here's the back camera. The angle is actually not as wide as the front camera. It's a little tighter. I have to hold the camera out a little bit further to get a, a good vlog style image or whatnot. But this is actually shooting in 4K. So I'm not sure what the bitrate is on this. I know on the Sony here. Um, one of the reasons I moved away from it, even when I was like sitting at the desk and whatnot, is this would shoot at the same bitrate as a C920, and the C920 actually had a better optical, uh, like basically the light pickup on it was way better. So um, that's kind of why I shied away from this event, and the low light on this was pretty bad, but I'm also hearing the low light on this is not great. So what we're going to do is go ahead, and we're going to go back through and just show the low light in every single camera real quick. Okay, so here I am back on the C920, and this is how I would normally stream. So the light is right there, and it is just basically shining up and hitting the ceiling. The reason I do this is because I'm very light sensitive, especially at night, and I get these really massive like migraines. If I have even like the overhead, I use this floor lamp instead of the overhead lamp at night because I've had even this overhead lamp. It's just such a bright light to me that. Um, I end up getting migraines and stuff and for my monitors what I have to do at night is turn them with so like there's like a blue filter or a blue tint so they almost come out like a uh, I guess orange is what they kind of come out looking like 
and it's like this orange or yellow it's like the same effect if you got like those really expensive gunners but it's just doing it so like this monitor for instance right here actually has a button it just the filters built in and that's when i just put on like a warmer color setting at night and then okay so what i have going on here is on this monitor over here i actually have the property settings for the c920 and if you look at the image right now it's just kind of grainy a little bit just very slight uh, I still think the image quality is serviceable and uh, fairly decent, but uh, what we're going to do here is mess around with the exposure, and if you guys can't tell, the frame rate is a little bit laggy, you know, even at 30 frames. And I'm going to show you what happens here, so we're going to go ahead and control this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the exposure down, and as I do that, you guys can see the frame rate is better. But if I turn it all the way up or turn it, start turning it up, you can see it starts kind of affecting how that captures. So this is very smooth. And if I turn, but the thing is, is if I turn the gain up, now the problem I'm dealing with is when you turn the gain up, there's more noise, as you guys can see. So if I was to do this and turn the exposure up, and turn the gain down there's not as much noise but now you can see the frame rate is worse so that's kind of the achilles heel achilles heel of the c920 so i think right light is set up to basically just take it to the edge of that so where the frame rate's decent enough but um you're still gonna it's still gonna have to do a higher gain and it's kind of lighting the conditions so one of the upgrades i'd like to do in the future is the logitech brio and that actually has a high dynamic range support so that should help get rid of a lot of problems even if it makes the image look kind of like uh, orange or a little green or whatnot because of the way hdr works sometimes um, it should be overall better than what the c920 can do right now and even at pumping out 4k at 30 or 1080 60 for streams you know that's going to make the youtube quality a lot better in the future but the first thing i want to do is actually get the camera on the phone up to snuff so i'm going to show you guys what i'm going to do with that but let's go ahead and go through the rest of the cameras to show you guys what they look like in the low light so this is what the xperia would do in low light yeah it's really grainy isn't it yeah it's kind of a mess so this is the xperia back camera uh, HDR is on it does a little bit better but it is an older camera so you guys can still see a bit of noise and stuff in the image uh, some of the gains off a little bit but um, quite a bit better than the front camera in my opinion okay so this is the front camera on the Samsung um, the low light is pretty much on par with the C920 matter of fact I think the frame rates better I'm actually looking at OBS right now and I can see that the frame rates better so this doesn't have the same problem with um, uh, low light that the C920 does at a certain point in exposure. And it kind of makes me wonder, so I never did get a clear answer whether this phone actually shoots in HDR or not, or, or what's going on. Okay, and so here's the back of the uh, S7 shooting in 4K, and as you can see, the low light's pretty good here. Same thing, no problem with the exposure or anything like that, like that. And once again, not sure if this is shooting in HDR but i think it is um but even if it's not it's still doing a better job than the sony camera did so you know it is what it is so what's the next step for all this so the next step is, is i'm going to start putting donation goals because as much as i'd like to have a dslr they're like 700 bucks and i saw a video the other day that really changed my mind about the direction i want to go on camera equipment so first th two things I needed was a tripod and a camera mount. They're already taken care of. Uh, I had a medic, I had Disturb Medic gave $25 the other night for a different goal. And I just went ahead and put it towards this. So I went to Monoprice, I ordered a, a little flexible tripod, almost like a Gorilla Pod, but it's their version, and a little cell phone holder to clamp on the cell phone onto that. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I don't know, I have kind of reservations about that, but I think it'll be okay. But um, the other thing, Samsung actually makes a cover for the phone that they call the lens cover, and that's about 60 bucks. It would normally be more, but I think because the S7 is being phased out, it's on sale right now, and I don't want to run into a situation where it's harder to get it down the road because it's harder to find. So it comes with two lenses. It comes with basically a wide, ang wide angle lens, which will make this a lot easier. It means I can hold it closer to my face without taking up the whole screen. and 
if I'm at an event or something blogging when I hold it out, you guys can see like everything around me and whatnot. So that would help out a lot. The other lens is a telephoto lens and that will screw on and when I take like uh, hardware shots or something like that of like whether it's a mouse or a video card or something like that, if I want to get the detail and get really close into that, the telephoto lens is going to really help pull in the uh, detail on the image and it'll even help uh, in like macro mode and stuff like that. 